Hello everyone, so today I was looking at this question asked on the community about uh, automation rules and automation rules uh, can be interesting because uh, although you can do a lot of wonderful things with automation rules but not everything is uh, straightforward all the time and uh, you have to of course uh, spend some time in the beginning to understand all the aspects, all the capabilities of uh, what all it can do. Now, this question is actually interesting. This question is about how to update uh, a multi-user or a multi-select user field. So basically, there is a multi-user field or multi-select field. And uh, you can actually use automation rules to do a lot of wonderful things with the inbuilt uh, capabilities of uh, updating a field. For example, if you have uh, a, a cascading select list or maybe if you have to update a field which uh, which is not available for you when you are writing your rule or when you are configuring your rule, then you can still use the advanced text area. So there is an advanced uh, text area option where you can basically type in your valid JSON. So anything that you can do with uh, your, I mean, when you have to update an issue and you can't find the option to use uh, the um, let us say all the fields you can use the advanced area to basically pass in the json and that json has to be in a format that is uh, basically similar to what you can do what you would do using uh, rest api so let me show you this example so let us say you have this particular field where uh, you may want to update this particular uh, multi-select field and uh, right now I, I of course have two fields here selected let me uh, maybe maybe get rid of one or maybe just uh, I, I'll just clear everything now I want this particular field to be updated using the JSON so you can do that and uh, before I can show you how this rule will work I basically wanted to show you that uh, whenever you have to figure out the valid JSON you can always take a look at of course the automation uh, or not automation but Jira's REST API documentation by the way I've already replied to Peter Peter and uh, uh, what I wanted to show you was the reference document so this reference document has all the details of REST API because you can uh, I mean you need to know uh, what all you can do with REST API the correct uh, body that you have to pass and uh, refer to this documentation all the time but when you start using it, you may not want to refer to to the documentation all the time. I mean, I, I don't really, really look at it for each and everything. I normally basically look at the the JSON response that I get from uh, simply fetching the issue using REST API. So let us say if you want to see how the options are stored in those multi in that particular multi select field, you can actually pass in this in your browser as well, or maybe you can use curl. So simply REST API 3 issue, which is the endpoint, and then pass in the issue key. And you can see here that this is the custom field, which is basically the same multi-user, I mean, not, not user in my case, but it is basically multi-select list field. And uh, of course, you can't really do each and everything. I mean, it has to be supported by REST API. If you can do it using REST API, then uh, most likely you should be able to also do it using automation rules when you are using the advanced area. So basically this is the format that you need to use. And in this particular case, we of course we are getting the information where uh, we have the information about the self and value and also the ID. We don't really need ID and self. We can get rid of uh, these two, but we can simply use value. And if I show you my one of my automation rule, so this is my automation rule where I am, I'll probably get rid of my face. I'll not get rid of it, but I'll move it on the left hand side. So you can still see me and uh, and uh, I can show you properly. So basically I have this rule where I'm trying to update the multi-select custom field and I want to do it, I want to, I want to trigger it when I transition the issue to in progress. And if you look at this particular uh, option here, like I'm not really using the fields on top, although you can for most of the fields, but not all the fields, not all the field types. So what I'm trying to do here is I am trying to use the advanced fields option and hey, here you can pass in the actual the actual uh, format that you can straight away copy from your uh, uh, 
JSON response when you retrieve the issue using REST API. And of course, right now we have two options, option one and option three. Maybe we can uh, also include one more. So I'll just copy it and uh, we'll have option one, two and three. So let us see if it works. So I'll save it, I'll publish the changes and uh, I want to do it on AN189. So let us try, I'll probably move the issue to in, pro in progress. And uh, while the rule is, ho hopefully the rule is running, I'll probably go to the audit log and I'll, yeah, it is al already a success. And I can maybe go back to the rule and I can hopefully do a refresh to validate whether this was indeed working or not. I'm sure it worked. I'm just trying to be extra careful. So this is working. One, two, three, multi-select list field. Let us also try maybe for 188, some, maybe any other issue because I want to show you. And uh, it's really cool actually. So right now we do have this multi select list field and uh, if I do this again, where is the, okay, so let us go to to do and then go to in progress one more time and maybe I'll take a look at the log. Yep, it was very quick in updating it. So let us take a look at it again refresh and uh, hopefully it will work so yeah we do have uh, option one two and three and uh, you can of course you know if in the ad in the advanced field here you can see here that we are uh, we are also updating the environment and labels and of course you know this should make sense it i mean if you have if you don't have really have that particular field it might not work or maybe maybe that particular value that you're passing is not correct. Maybe if the value, if, if the format of the JSON is not correct, uh, then of course it won't work and you will probably see an error in the log. So that is all I wanted to talk about in this video. I hope you enjoyed watching this video and you learned something new today. Thank you. Thank you very much. Bye bye.